here to praise you. Lift our hearts and sing. We are here to give you the best that we can bring. And it is a love rising from our hearts. Everything within us cries. Abba Father. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as we all know, today is a great day because we celebrate the mercy and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 38 says, Be merciful as my Father is merciful. So this festival celebration gives us a challenge to be merciful as the Heavenly Father is merciful. That mercy is manifested through the life and mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. Seeing the face of Jesus, we have to be like Him. And today, we have our Archbishop amidst us to celebrate this Eucharist and to give a meaningful homily related to the mercy and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And He will challenge us to be like Jesus, be merciful like his Father. So, dear Grace, on behalf of all, the superior and all other priests and all the believers here, I extend warm and cordial welcome to you.
you are always an inspiration for us to celebrate this feast. This is the 18th Divine Mercy feast that we celebrate here and almost all years as he is in Bangalore, he used to come over here to celebrate the Eucharist and the former Archbishops also. So we have enjoyed his love and his compassion much towards this Logos Retis Center. And also we take inspiration from him to celebrate this feast because he is also reflecting the mercy and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ through his words, through his prayers, through his actions. So we have to pray for him, to strengthen his hands, to do more words of mercy and compassion and exchange more words of mercy and compassion to the believers. So we all pray for you, dear Archbishop, and extend warm welcome to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear fathers, sisters, and my dear friends, I wish all of you the divine mercy feast. This feast, Divine Mercy, brings us that joy that the Lord Jesus has given us his mercy, shared us his mercy, that in our life we may be peaceful, enjoying the mercy of the Lord, peaceful with God and peaceful with our brothers and sisters. Saint Faustina was asked by the Divine Master to share this merciful love of God with our brothers and sisters. And the church has declared this second Sunday of Easter as Divine Mercy Sunday. Dear friends, let us open our hearts to the merciful Savior to enjoy that Divine Mercy. Let us recall to mind our shortcomings, our failures, our negligence, our sinfulness, and ask that same blood which cleansed the hearts of the sinful people pour down on us and cleanse us at this moment so that we offer this Mass worthily. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me, me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray god of everlasting mercy who in the very recurrence of the paschal feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own increase we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed and by whose spirit they have been reborn and by whose blood they have been redeemed through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. The faithful were together and had all things in common. And they, the new converts, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all as any had need and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes they partook of food with glad and generous hearts praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved the word of the lord and speak to god
The second reading, St. Peter tells the new converts about the great love and mercy God has shown them, and he also exhorts them to endure the sufferings and trials that come on their way. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of the day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, 
peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, the Divine Mercy Sunday we celebrate today. That Divine Mercy we all fully experience that day when we celebrated Good Friday. The divine mercy when that Jesus hanged on the cross for the salvation of humankind, you and me, and said, it is accomplished. Accomplish the work that the Father had given to him to redeem the world, redeem you and me, redeem everything that the Lord God had created. And then he said, into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. That moment, my dear friends, that divine mercy was experienced. Even the soldiers who were there condemning him bowed their head and struck their breast because they saw in that Jesus on the cross God himself who died for the humankind. There cannot be more act of mercy than that that Jesus died for us sinners. Dear friends, in 1931, the Lord 
appeared to Saint Faustina in a convent congregation of merciful Savior and there she had a vision of the very the picture of what we see in the divine mercy the Lord appearing to her and from the side of him two rays coming down one red uh, other one pale white one representing the water of baptism of righteousness cleansing us the second race red representing the blood of Jesus Christ washing our sins and the divine mercy Lord asked her spread this devotion throughout the world and everyone who has trust in the divine mercy will be saved and I will save them at their deathbed. Dear friends, today we know the church has spread this devotion declaring second Sunday of Easter as a divine mercy Sunday. And everyone throughout the world today has this love for the divine mercy devotion, knowing full well that we are all sinners and we all need mercy of the Lord. My dear friends, in the second reading of the Mass today, we just heard those words, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope, to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. To his divine mercy, great mercy, we have been reborn. Yes, our life is centered on the resurrection of our Lord. If Christ had not risen, there would not have been any meaning for our life. Life would have ended here on the earth. But Jesus rose from his death and has given us the hope that he will all rise again, rise again to be with him in the heavenly kingdom, provided we all seek his divine mercy while we are here on earth. My dear friends, we speak about mercy. We speak about divine mercy. What do we really understand by word mercy or merciful? We apply this every day in our life. We say, Father is kind and merciful. We say, a teacher is kind and merciful. We say, when you go to the hospital, we say, the doctor is very kind the nurse was very kind and merciful. We always use these words in our life. When someone goes out of himself or herself and come to our help, we say that person, that person is kind, that person is helpful, that person is merciful. As someone goes out of himself and helps others, let me just tell you, as I was coming, I saw a group of women that, at that park there. And there was a boy sitting there at the park outside. And that boy was 
wanting some help. Maybe that boy had not eaten. Maybe that boy was hungry or thirsty or sick. I saw the women crossing and going to that young boy, maybe about around 10 years, and speaking to him, finding out what is the problem. Yes, those women showed the loving heart to that boy, towards that boy, or maybe they came to his help, whatever help he might have needed. My dear friends, divine mercy, apply it to our Lord Jesus Christ. See what the Lord has done for us. God has done for us. When Man sin. God promised that he would send the Savior into this world. He would send the Savior, born of a woman, and that woman will crush the head of the servant. And that is, serpent head means crush the evil one. That is the promise the Lord gave. The Lord gave the promise that he will conquer sin and death and he will save us. And he kept to his promise. And that is his mercy. God kept to his promise throughout what cost him to keep his promise. The scripture tells us to save the chosen people of God. He sent kings, prophets, everyone. And everyone was killed. Finally, God says, I have to keep my promise. I cannot go back on my promise. And he sent his own son. He sent his own son. And did not accept him. His own people would not accept the one whom God the Father sent into this world. And he had to sacrifice his own son. Jesus die for us. That was the divine will that God who came, became man for us should die on the cross. Through one man, sin came into this world. And through one man, salvation was achieved through his son, Jesus Christ. And that is the divine mercy. Today, we are celebrating. We are experiencing. Mercy calls for sacrifice. Sacrifice on our part. To enjoy God's mercy, we should sacrifice ourselves. We should conquer our sin, acknowledge our sin, and go to the feet of Jesus and say, I have sinned like that prodigal son. To be merciful, I should go out of myself and go and help others. And we have every day at our disposal, every moment, so many means to show God's mercy in our own way. How many times, dear brothers and sisters, we pray every day in our prayer, our Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. When we call upon God to be merciful to us, towards others, what does that demand of us? 
Is it not demands of us that I should be kind and merciful towards my servants, towards my fellow workers, towards my brothers and sisters, towards people at home, in the church, in the society, in the workplace? How do we ask God's mercy if we are not prepared to show that mercy in our own life? For God to show mercy, it demanded his own son to be sacrificed. For us to be merciful, we too should be kind and merciful. Yes, we should be prepared to sacrifice our time, our energy, our health, our money, everything for the sake of our others. Remember what the Lord has said. Whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done it to me. Dear friends, the gospel of the mass today. The appearance of Jesus to the disciples. First time when he appeared, Thomas was not there. Second time, Thomas was there because what apostles told Thomas that they saw Jesus appeared, he would not believe. Look at Jesus. When Thomas was there the second time, Jesus comes and tells Thomas, Thomas, come here. See my hands and feet and side. Do not doubt, believe. See the kindness of the master, kindness of the Lord. He'll not let him down. Yes, doubtful Thomas, let him go away. No. Jesus came in search of Thomas. And what happened to Thomas? Look at that Thomas. My Lord and my God. He cried out. Profess his faith. And that very Thomas, St. Thomas, came to our country to share the divine mercy of the Lord. The Lord who appeared to him to proclaim to the world, keep him to the commandment of the Lord, go to the whole world and proclaim the good news. And we owe our faith to him because the seed of faith in our country was sown by him. Yes, that is the transformation comes to each one of us when we enjoy the divine mercy. My dear friends, in the second part of the Gospel of Mass today, the Lord gave command to the Lord, to the disciples, whoever sins you forgive, they will be forgiven. Who sins you keep back, they will be retained. Not only the Savior showed his mercy by dying on the cross and showing us his mercy, but he knew till the end of time, man who is sinful by nature will always commit sin and go away from the Lord, from his creator, and from brothers and sisters. And his mercy, he wanted to remain in this world and people to experience to the church that he has founded through the apostles and all his successors. And this is why he said he gave the power to forgive sins to the church, to the disciples. Whoever sins you forgive, they will be forgiven. And since that retain will retain the sacrament of reconciliation, what we call sacrament of penance or confession, the best gift besides the gift of the Eucharist and the baptism that we have, the best gift the Lord has given to the church is the sacrament of reconciliation. No one 
has this facility to accept the church. Look at the faithful. Whoever we did and whatever sin we have committed, Lord waits there with the open hands to welcome us like the prodigal father and embrace us into his bosom. Look at that prodigal son and the father. Father did not even allow that son to open his mouth to say, I have sinned against you and God. He goes and embraces him. And that is what happens in the confessional. When we open us, open up ourselves and confess our sins from the bottom of our heart with a contrite spirit. My dear friends, yes, that divine mercy we experience every time when we receive the sacrament of reconciliation, every time we receive the Eucharist, every time we come and share the banquet of the Lord. Today, when we celebrate the Divine Mercy Sunday, we should ask ourselves, are we going to celebrate the Divine Mercy once a year or enjoy the Divine Mercy every moment of our life? Are we going to open our hearts to our Divine Mercy and pour out our spirit to the Lord and enjoy that divine mercy into our heart and share this divine mercy with our brothers and sisters. Whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done to me. I would like to place before you, my dear brothers and sisters, the man who owed 400 denarii to the master. What did the master say when he cried out? Master wanted to sell him and his wife and children to that 500. And he says, have mercy on me and I will pay you back. And the master not only remitted 100% sent him away with his kindness and mercy. But in turn, when he goes back on the way, he finds his fellow worker who owed him just pittance. And he says, give me what you owe. And the man says, give me time and I will pay you back. And he could not show that mercy towards him. He put him in the jail, the scripture says, till he pays back. And when the master came to know about it, we know what had happened. He said, I showed you mercy. Could you do that in turn to your fellow worker? Dear friends, same thing the Lord Jesus, our loving God, tells us today. You come to my feet asking for mercy. And I'm here pouring out my heart to you. I'm ready to show my mercy towards you. Forgive you your sins. But remember, the condition, be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful. But the words the director placed before us at the beginning of this mass, quoting St. Luke, be merciful like the heavenly father is merciful. Yes, we are all called upon to follow our Heavenly Father in our own way, wherever we are. As we celebrate today the Divine Mercy Feast, let us enjoy that mercy of the Lord, peace of the Lord, kindness of the Lord in our life and share the same Divine Mercy with our brothers and sisters so that, as we heard in the first reading, those first faithful, first Christians, Sold everything. They were kind to each other. Forgiving each other. Everyone had one heart and one mind. 
We are all faithful. Sharing one faith, one baptism, sharing the same bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ should have that spirit in us that we are all brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We should love each other, respect each other, help each other, and build a community of faithful witnessing the faith that we have received from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the hill. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of a body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as we rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray for the whole church, for all our needs, especially for an increase of faith in the risen Lord, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord and God. Our response, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For our Pope, the bishops, the priests, and the religious, that the Lord, who in his great mercy has saved us from sin and death, through his own death and resurrection, may enable them to show the compassion of the Lord in the exercise of their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all the followers of Jesus who said, be merciful just as your heavenly Father is merciful, that they may always hearken to this command of Jesus and be merciful and compassionate to their fellow beings and thus be true witnesses of him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all those who are wavering in faith, that they may learn from the Apostle Thomas, who confessed this total faith in the Lord by proclaiming, My Lord and my God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all those who have lost faith, that they may trust in the merciful Lord, who said, I have not come for the virtuous, but for sinners, and accept the forgiveness he offers unconditionally, and learn to live in love, love for God and for neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. us. For all of us who are blessed to be participate in this Eucharist sacrifice, that we may grow in faith every day and proclaim the gospel to the world so that God's word in all its power may penetrate deep into the hearts of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Pray for community and personal needs. We thank you, Father, for the mercy shown to your children by redeeming us through your son's passion, death, and resurrection. May we, who are recipients of your mercy, be merciful towards others. And may the balm of your mercy reach both believers and those far away as a sign of the kingdom of God already present in our midst, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the praise and glory, and glory of, of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. But dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, O oh, come with the Paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Father, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Spirit, Hosanna, 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 Holy One. The fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to a disciple saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with the Francis First our Pope and Bernard Morris our Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quiet to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your trusting. spirit. sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus 
was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption. Give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Amen. the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go forth the Master Center. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. His Grace Bernard Morris, Reverend Father George Vidyangal, Director of Logos Retreat Center. All of the reverend fathers, reverend sisters, and you, my brothers and sisters in Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Through St. Paul, Holy Spirit reminds us, rejoice. Again I say, rejoice. And I'm sure that joy is overwhelmed because of the blessings we received for the last few days. Lord was showering so many blessings upon each and every one of us through different people, anointed personalities and services. At last, the end of this uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, we have a great anointed personality that is His Grace Bernard Morris. We all know that Archbishop is very busy with so many uh, pastoral responsibilities, such a big archdiocese it is. But I remember every time, for every Divine Mercy Convention, Archbishop is making sure that he comes to Logos. Such a love and care and concern he has toward Logos and Logos Ministries. And again, today, during the Mass, such a beautiful sermon he delivered, very inspiring, meaningful sermon. I'm sure we are all enriched because of that beautiful sermon. So on behalf of everyone gathered here, especially on behalf of Father Director, Father Superior, all the fathers, brothers and sisters, I extend my heartfelt thanks toward Reverend, sorry, His Grace Bernard Morris. Now I invite our General Convener, Brother Mohan Kumar, to offer a shawl and a bouquet as a token of our love and our appreciation towards His Grace. My dear friends, I would like to thank Father Jose, the director, and all his collaborators at the Logos Center for this retreat center, which all of us know brings together all of you and all of us to experience the love of God through various retreat programs and other programs conducted here. On behalf of the Archdiocese and my own behalf, I would like to thank him and all those who support this retreat center. God bless you, Father. Now we all stand up, lift up our both hands, we pray together for anointing of the Holy Spirit. We have received the Holy Eucharist. Christ is present in us. Now we receive mighty anointing to go out and serve the Lord with charisms of the Holy Spirit. Let us close our eyes and lift up our both hands and invite the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Let us sing. 
out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. Jesus, pour out your spirit. 